back, we were continuing if some of the discussions on the cases and examples. So, we will continue with that discussion which is connected to the different modules of the case studies uh, of the modules and the case studies related to it. So, let us begin. So, this part of the lecture session will be held to share various successful cases examples related to employees training and development. So, this example we are relating to week 9 of the lecture session, where we are trying to see like how Infosys is trying to train board members on design thinking. The board members of Infosys, one of the largest IT companies in India, underwent training that aimed to enhance design thinking among the participants in the year 2016. Design thinking refers to a practice where conventional problems are resolved through newer and innovative methods. Though such efforts are common worldwide, it was for the first time in an Indian IT industry where a company was aligning the board as a part of strategy to bring about a cultural change in the workplace. The company wanted to change the perception of being traditional outsourcing company. This exercise was introduced under the guidance of Vishal Sikka, who encouraged all his employees to participate in the exercise. To make his efforts effective, he invited experts such as Alan Kay to conduct few sessions with the employees and the executives. The board members were encouraged to participate in immersion sessions, which also included one of the upcoming areas such as artificial intelligence. Now, the question which is for discussion is why was the training for board members arranged? It can be answered in this way like it was for the first time in the Indian IT industry where a company like Infosys was aligning training and design thinking with the board member as a part of strategy to bring about cultural change in the workplace. So, if you can understand as a part of if any culture change needs to happen, it needs to be like, like top driven. So, the people at the board level, they need to visualize the change, understand it, assimilate it, align with it themselves and then only they can like propagate it, they, then only they, they can disseminate that training, that knowledge to the other people present in the organization. So, it is very essential part like the board members get aligned to the uh, vision, the philosophy which is going to bring in a cultural change and for that reason the training for the board members were arranged. Next we can discuss about like the effect, the efforts taken by Google to train at least 1.3 lakh developers in partnership with Plural Site and Udacity. This is connected to the lecture uh, to the week 11 of the lecture session. So, the Google, the most popular search engine, planned to train 1.3 lakh developers and students in India with the support of Plural Site technology learning platform and Udacity Educational Institute in order to develop a highly skilled technological workforce. The plan of Google include to sponsor like more than lakh scholarships in plural site and 30,000 scholarships in Udacity. The scholarship program consisted of two phases, namely free access to Udacity courses in mobile and web development with mentorship and community support. The top 1000 performers get entitled for additional 6 month scholarship to mobile and web developer 
nano degree programs which include mentorship, community support and expert project reviews. Around 210,000 students have already completed Google developed courses in Udacity. Around 1,17,000 students completed the courses in 2017 alone. Google has trained around 1,000 faculties across 400 colleges and 11 state universities for technologies of the future. Now, the questions for discussion. What was the purpose of having Google's partnership with Pluralsight and Udacity? Google planned to sponsor 30,000 scholarships on Udacity. Around 2,10,000 students have already completed Google developed courses on Udacity. Why it has happened? So, we can discuss the question like uh, the answers in this respect. So, there could be other like answers also which you can discuss in the like discussion board when we come up. We have tried to give you some suggested answers like this as it goes. Like what is the purpose of Google having partnership with Plural Site and Udacity? It may be that in order to develop a highly skilled technological workforce within a period Google decided to establish this partnership so that they are training their future employees, they are making them ready, so that from that they can have a larger pool of people who are already ready to enter into the workforce and they are taking this initiative, so that they are training them on those things or for which like they, they will be required later on and as young brands, as enthusiastic people, they can learn in a much better way. So, maybe Google has taken this initiative. So, you can think of other answers also and write to us in the discussion board about your thought process of the all the case discussions that are going on and the answers, probable answers that you may think about like the questions that have been posted. So, the Google planned like to sponsor 30,000 scholarships in Udacity, but 2 like 10,000 people have completed the courses like why it is so happened. Like free access to Udacity courses in mobile and web development with mentorship and community support may be an influential factor or, um, or it may have also happened that Google might have increased its sponsorship on Udacity. Whatever it is, like the Google, uh, that Google has got attached to this course, is is of course again the in reputation building Udacity courses. And the Google has partnered with it, has has made the courses the popular, and people have taken much like more people have completed these courses, uh, like free access. It is freely accessible. So, that people have taken their learning opportunity and learn from it for on the on the self paced courses. Because whenever we are talking of career development, whenever we are talking of self development, it is, it is also in the hand of the employees to uh, develop the future employees and future employees to develop themselves. So, it, the, you have you need to be in search of how to keep yourself updated, upgraded and you have to th take advantage of the available knowledge which is now more with this uh, like education being open, more free courses are available and you need to take full advantage of it. Maybe the students have taken that advantage and that is why there has been so many students who have completed the uh, Google developed courses on Udacity. Another example which is related to week 11 of the lecture is the railway boards design training ups to upskill the employees. A 5 days on the job skill training was designed for Indian railways employees in order to cater to the needs of growing passenger expectations for superior service amenities. 
The program was to be developed by the general managers as suggested by the chairman Brill board Ashwani Lohani. Mr. Lohani also suggested the introduction of the training capsules for all the employees to boost their productivity and efficiency. Each employee in each zone had undergone one, a week's training in skills and knowledge related to their work. This project was to be named as Saksham. The GMs were expected to categorize training for each specific zone. A training calendar was also planned to be formulating by the 31st December 2017. The GMs were made responsible for involving the reporting managers of all the employees. Question is why did the railway board design the training? Let us see. So, the other, other points that you find in this uh, whole discussion was that the GMs were made responsible for involving the reporting managers for all the employees and you see the minister also was himself very much in, like involved. If you read through the case, you will find that the minister was also very much the general manager, the chairman, minister, everyone was involved in this whole thing. The, why this effort? So, if again it is a top down approach, you just you cannot tell the employee this to go for this training. They need to be energized for it, they need to be boosted for it and people have to take interest in their development. It should not appear like you are sending you for training only for the organization's purpose, but the training is also for the self development of the employees. So, the involvement of the um, general managers and then the um, in, in the designing of the process, monitoring of the process, hand holding support, uh, so that they, which is, they facilitate the whole process and so that which will help them to make them understand their nature of work. This the connection, the bond that they develop between a higher level officer and maybe his team members through this process of training is also an additional gain that we get from whenever we are talking of the implications of, of training or the effectiveness of the training program or the like outcomes of a training program when a general manager level person comes and addresses the training needs of an employee, helps them to understand, give them a hand, hand holding support for their skill development, it automatically creates a like feeling of positive attitude towards the organization, towards the job and increases employee engagement also. So, these are additional things, additional benefits, outcomes that we get in the training process when it is top driven and the top people take much interest in the development of the employees throughout the organization. Relating to the work, uh, working at home, is it a disruption? This is related to the week 12 of the lecture session. So, the many employees are desiring to work at home. So, the companies are using the work from home as a benefit that helps recruit and retain talented employees. Several studies have shown benefits from the working at home. This could result from reducing the hassles of commuting to work and allowing employees to better balance work and life responsibilities such as child care, dealing with ailing spouse and elderly. It is found from a study that office employees who work from home may spend around 57 hours each week before they feel as if their work life is out of their balance compared to 38 hours a week for employees who work at their office. But working from home may have several significant disadvantages also which include taking advantage of the policy of to extend weekends by not working on Fridays and Mondays 
a loss of the potential benefits from having face to face interaction with colleagues that are useful for sharing knowledge and generating creative solutions to products and service problems. Being in the office is an essential because many jobs require close collaboration with colleagues or working from teams on, on teams projects. Also, unplanned personal interactions occurring at the offices can lead to new ideas or working relationships. So, we have like to both the ways the advantages of work, working from home and the disadvantages and maybe of working from home and maybe the maybe due to like tendencies to escape work, tendencies to extend the workload and maybe the missed opportunities of you know like interacting with colleagues or some unplanned interactions which may give rise to new ideas and strengthening of the working relationships. Now, the questions for discussions over here is like what type of disruptions we may think like is happening with maybe at working from home and how can this be dealt with, what type of potential benefits is supposed to be lost. Uh, so, while trying to answer the first question, we may think like this, this could be an organizational disruption as the companies are using the work from home as a benefit that helps recruit and retain talented employees. So, if you are talking of disruptive thinking, if you are thinking, trying to think of thinking in a newer way and preparing ourselves for it, maybe before in other situations, we never thought of like these kind of uh, uh, arrangements could be made, some jobs could be done and translated uh, from like working from home. And, and along with that, of course, newer and newer technologies, assistive technologies are coming up. That is very important additional points. Like in order to enable this to happen, some assistive technologies are coming up which are helping you to like uh, translate or transform into this system at with much ease. And it is required like people get accustomed of using those technologies like uh, either whether we are talking of Webex meeting or Zoom or Google Meet or using hybrid modes of delivering uh, in terms of like while taking classes. So, all these are newer technologies which are coming up maybe when the situation started at the start point it was not there, but understanding the needs of the situations, understanding the problems that the people are facing day in and day out while working from home and the challenges which are appearing. So, to answer to those challenges, newer innovations are taking up in the technology platform and people are getting more accustomed to it, people are also learning it, those things are getting assimilated into the system and with the help of these assisted technologies, these newer ways of working are emerging and that is where the training is required now in how to learn those technologies, assimilate this into our process of working and make with the help of those assistive things, how to make life in a more smooth flow and carry out the work. So, if you are talking of disruption, so this is the different way of thinking totally from earlier time that has happened and it has shifted the metrics also, it has shifted the de uh, definition also like when we talk of being present at work, like if we talk of absenteeism, maybe the way that it was defined earlier, like when it was only working from office and when it was not this like maybe a flexible or hybrid kind of work, like sometimes you spend in office. So some of the days of the week you may can work from home. So, newer definitions are coming up accordingly the matrices or the matrices of measuring it needs to be adjusted also. So, that is where we need to focus on uh, try to see and f upgrade ourselves towards those ways of working. 
So, if from that way this is a disruption in terms of disrupting earlier ways of doing things and pushing people to think into something innovative, something different which is helping towards the productivity of the organization and also helping towards to some extent to maintain or to maybe if we can go through research studies uh, like uh, balancing employees work life balance and uh, answering to the family issues, balancing work and everything how beneficial it has been to like make a balance between work life and family life. And it again it talks of like uh, also a uh, need of the person's training in terms of though we are working from home then how to create an office type situation in the home so that we are able to maintain a thin line of difference between a private our private life and our professional life and we are able to be as much serious to our professional requirements deliverables as we are serious to our uh, personal requirements and so that we are how how do we create office space within the uh, like your home situation also which is the, which is your office within your home and while you are working from there it is maybe you are in a home setup but mentally you are there in an office setup and that is with that dedication and with that engagement you are like try to be seriously working towards your deliverables towards the uh, office work that has been given to you. So, that is again a different way that the of employees need to learn like how to adjust assimilate this thing within the home situation also and how to not only get awareness about it oneself but how to make the family members and the associated people connected in the family to respect that situation and to recognize that it is work going on and be trained for it. So, that, that training maybe is also required both in the for the employee and the family members together to recognize and respect that work situation and create maybe less of disturbances or noises or other talks or you know like allowing the person the space and the time that is very important allowing the person the space and the time to complete his or her responsibilities for the office work. Coming next to the question like how this can be dealt with. So, uh, whenever we are talking of this how this can be dealt with it is like training need assessment and designing for employees training can be helpful for upskilling and motivational support. So, this we this is definitely as we have discussed earlier like upskilling and training the employees for some of the uh, like as I told technological aids new new aids that are coming up new new ways of behaving it is not only technical but behavioral training also etiquette training also then how to like how to interact with the virtual team how to attend meetings in virtual situations new new train new training domain is itself getting unfolded and um, how to um, like uh, if you are meeting face to face maybe you can design your uh, phase of work who completes and passes it to whom. So, how to you like synchronize your work. So, these kind time management the different different uh, training opportunities domains are coming up uh, team building virtual teams interacting how to attend meetings how to control meeting situations so whichever position you are in. So, these kind of things are coming up. So, different so training needs are required for uh, upskilling and motivational support so that you uh, accept the situations the context and get yourself prepared so that you can um, like answer to it in a better way along with that which i discussed in addition is of course 
like when it is a working from home situation it is not only the employee who needs to be like mentally understand the importance of the work from home and how the home environment needs to be ready for it but somewhere it requires the involvement of the family members also in the training process so that they can also understand and respect the work done by the employee from the home and give them that personal space there as their and respect their role as the employee and allow them that the personal space and time so that they can complete their work and like as effectively as they would have done from office so third question of course which we, we have tried to answer over here what type of potential benefits is supposed to be lost like the loss of the potential benefits of course as we are telling is which we have generally from face to face interactions with colleagues that are useful for sharing knowledge and generating creative solutions to products or service problems this is definitely a loss that we have and but again we may again find out devices which like whenever we are talking of whatsapp group and other things video calls so these are uh, definitely things which are equitable e like equivalence but we may not tell like these are equals to these face to face interactions the warmth that you generate from uh, the colleagues meeting each other maybe discussing on a particular topic brainstorming new ideas coming up and the social space that you share with each other helps in developing the bond with each other so these are some definite uh, things that which are not present while you are talking of maybe working from home or working through like in virtual modes but each of the so each of these things like whether you are in the face to face situation or uh, working in a virtual scen scenario each will have its own pros and cons advantages and disadvantages and these are accepted part of the whole thing and we need to adjust to it be resilient towards it be flexible towards it and we may try to design a model which is a hybrid model where we can have a mix and match of both the situations so that we can feel that warmth of like the face to face interactions like even like once in a week or through small discussion groups and boards where we are discussing only informal things and uh, may not be the formal work situation so there are and in that way newer innovations newer trainings may be coming up and we are looking forward to it so thank you so with this we come to the end of this lecture session and these have been the references for from where we have developed this uh, the tr cases that we have uh, discussed in this particular lecture session so in conclusion we can tell like this part of the lecture session has given clear picture by giving various references of examples and cases on employees training and development we thank you for your patient hearing and learning and we expect that you'll share your views with us in the discussion board and maybe more lively discussions on the solving the different cases examples will be there in the uh, forums when we meet thank you for your patient listening and hope you enjoyed the whole training module and happy learning thank you